let's take a look to the future if you can imagine such a thing a report on the future of the office and office workers in the uk in view of the covid19 pandemic has revealed changes to how office workers will operate shifts in working arrangements that have taken place since march will continue and there will not be a universal return to the office after the coronavirus. A report published found that uh, the pre-pandemic 95 in the office will be a thing of the past and will stay that way. Let's get more now, I'm delighted to say. We are joined on the line by Jeremy Stein, the Managing Director of the BCFA. Uh, that is the British Business Association for the Contract Furnishing Industry. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Well, I'm Mark glad to be here. Um, great to have you on the show. So is this good news or bad news that we're not going to be going back to the office en masse? I think ultimately it's, good. it's probably good news, but it's, it's, it's a mixed question because I mean, we commission the report because we represent uh, work, you know, office furniture to know whether there is going to be a future for the office. Is, it, is the office dead? And uh, there's been a massive cultural change and business culture change. Um, a business culture tends, tends to change very slowly. Before the pandemic, only around 6% of workers actually worked from the home. And we saw sort of peaks around 50% at the height of the lockdown. And even on, by August, it was around 40%. And those those workers um, found out what it was like to work at home. You know, the flexibility you can get from that, the the, the lack of commuting, the savings, the, the, the time with, um, with the family, all those sort of issues. And people are not going to want to go back to that they're not going to rush back to the office it's not like switching off a light switch well i mean i rush back because i love my colleagues so much especially mike graham and julia hartley brewer but i can understand uh, that there are a lot of office politics which will now disappear as you mentioned people will save money on public transport uh, a lower carbon footprint and big cost savings for businesses which i guess is also good news because we know that businesses are under huge pressure at the moment so if their outgoings are lower then that possibly offers some some hope for their future it, it does i mean i think i think that you know the business saw very rapidly you know savings and costs but also productivity uh, they saw i think 80 percent of businesses that were surveyed saw a jump in productivity but there are downsides to this as well and the downsides from the home working are that in fact the study of the surveys we conducted showed that the work stress the work stress in the workplace for those working entirely so it's not it's not a, it's an all, not all good news and things like um 20 percent of the workers said that the, the people who surveyed said that they were they felt isolated and unsupported and those are not good things for the the future engagement the work stress in the workplace for, for those working entirely so it's not it's not a, it's an all not all good news and things like um 20 percent of the workers said that the, the people who surveyed said that they were they felt isolated isolated and unsupported and those are not good things for the the future engagement and um you know enthusiasm for working and businesses need to consider that whether home working is almost as bad purely as, as, as working in the office we, we think from the report that in fact there's a blended way of working and flexibility is the way the way forward and that means yes offices are going to be needed but they're going to be very different it's less about desking but more about meeting space and time when you know people can come together have meetings as you see see, see your colleagues and engage and do the nice things about work face to face indeed and uh, w- on this show we've we've had industry uh, experts tell us you know across various industries that, that the issue you have with home working is that it's not great for junior employees who are on a learning curve it's fine for established team members but if you've got um you know people that are still uh, you know in the process of training learning on the job um if they're on their own they can become very isolated exactly and, and especially um for, you know, new recruits who uh, they can be onboarded and they can go through a, a training package but if you don't have that social interaction face to face with your colleagues again that loneliness can kick in very very quickly also what again, about this- what about career progression jeremy yeah just catching the boss's eye that's not going to happen when you're at home is it already seen online that there are webinars about how to get promoted during the from home working these sort of things are already coming into place because you're right the people are going to have to learn new skills about how to show them you know there are some people who are going to be very good to you know to perform online and other people who work quite in the backgrounds and that they will they possibly will have a problem also have we been seduced perhaps by the fool's gold of the last few months we've seen as you said fantastic productivity people have been working from home they've enjoyed the freedom of it however uh, that could be a short-term thing. We don't know the long-term implications of working remotely, do we? 
Well, we do. We we do know that the, the longer people work from, the, the more entrenched they 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 you know it's not. It can go either way. Mm. Uh, if 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 they if they work for positive companies and supportive companies. They, they can become that, that enjoyment of working home can increase, but also if they work with companies that are unsupportive and are uh, poor management techniques, that can be a very slippery slope both for you know both the company and, and and the workers. And you and you will see when we get out of this, and companies are out there who offer uh, a very supportive, flexible. They will be the ones that people want to work for. So businesses are going to have to consider, have to consider this. They're going to have to make an offer. Um, home working long term if people don't want to do it and the survey we the, the key survey we came out with only 15 percent of people we surveyed wanted to work home, pure home working they wanted flexibility yes i suppose there's a sweet spot where you have some engagement with your colleagues perhaps once or twice a week where you check in you have the meetings um bit of training uh, and feedback and then the rest of the time you you, you go back home and you and you and you sort of crack on and of course the other important distinction to make is that not working in office does not always mean being sat in your living room does it jeremy because there's remote working and perhaps i mean it might be something as informal as popping to your local starbucks but also there are going to be remote locations where people can hot desk and facilities like we work and and other 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 resources that will be nearby but not necessarily the office they, they will be, but those resources for the numbers of people we're talking about at the moment, they're not there. Um, and although you know some of the big companies like NatWest are looking to move people out to regional hubs, these regional hubs need to be built um, when when we can get back into them. So it's 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 something that um, you know businesses are going to have to start planning for now, and also government. Um, uh, they're going to have to enable these changes. Tell, tell us about the BCFA. It's the it's the business association for the contract furnishing industry. Now, what is the contract furnishing industry? It's, 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 the, it's the business of business. It's, I mean, in offices and hospitality, it's the desking, it's the, it's the tables, it's carpets, lighting. Uh, we work very closely with the designers and architects, and we supply, if you go to a restaurant, pretty much everything apart from the knives and forks um, will be supplied by our members. Um, All right. but, you know, so it's, it's, uh, as far as the UK goes, we have got an amazing, it's one of those hidden industries. It's, it's uh, I think, our turnover is, I think we've got about 18,000 companies in total in the sector, and um, it's about two billion. It's one of those hidden industries, and we're very good at it. We'll have to see whether you can get me a special price on a chaise long. Um, Jeremy, what, how, how have your members been impacted by coronavirus, if that's not a silly question? It, but they have. I mean, they've, it's been, yep, I mean, I, they were, the shutdown, the, the ironic thing is when we had the shutdown, one of the key things that came out of, of um, the, desking chairs for home working our members all shut down uh, they were closed for, for six seven weeks um, they're up and running again um, but the, the area that's been hit the most has been the hospitality suppliers the hospitality industry as we all know and suffered immensely um, and the, my members who supply to that likewise have been uh, they're not you know they're down by half on their turnover and that's that's the longer this goes on that's a tough situation to be in but they're surviving they're, they're, they're being innovative and adaptive and uh, Well, Jeremy, we we just lost you there at the end, but we wish you and your colleagues um, a, a speedy uh, navigation through this uh, difficult time. And I hope that all those businesses can prevail in the long term. Jeremy Steen is the uh, managing director of the BCFA, the British Business Association for the Contract Furnishing Industry. Interesting stuff. Uh, 